Oh, the keeper of mankind, you are worthy. Oh, we give you praise, O oh God. Somebody, please leave those hands and give him worship. Let your worship rise from within you, from within you. Let your worship rise this morning. You didn't wake yourself day up this morning. He woke you up. He woke you up. You're looking beautiful because of Jesus. Please let your worship rise. Let it come from within you. From inside. From inside out. From inside out. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Please welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. Fill the atmosphere. Fill the atmosphere. Oh, fill the atmosphere. Oh yes, yes, yes. Let us feel you. Let us encounter you this morning. Holy Spirit, thank you. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet Spirit of God.
Jesus in this beautiful morning. Clap those hands and love on the Lord. If you're glad to be alive and well, online, on site, make some Holy Ghost noise. Declared, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to Roderick to the house of the Lord. Thank God for one day, one morning. We're so grateful, Father. We lift our hearts and our voices. Thank you, HOJ. Thank you, thank you. Can you celebrate them? Celebrate, them. celebrate. Them. Hallelujah. We lift our hearts and our voices to bless you for the gift of life. The honor to gather again under this open heavens at the feet of Jesus. We're so grateful for the ways and manners you've continued to bless us, even in spite of our many shortcomings, frailties. We're grateful. Thank you for what you're set to do today in today's service. I beseech you once again that you take the coal of fire from the altar of heaven, place upon my lips and my tongues of clay. That in the brevity of the moment, I will come to your people online, on site, with the thus said the Lord. Move every man from where we are to the very place called destiny. We'll vow, as always, the praise, the glory, the honor will be yours and yours alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Romans 1, 15 to 17. Very quickly, Romans 1, 15 to 17. Good morning, everyone. Romans 1, 15 to 17. I read to your hearing. If you have the Bible, let's read together. So KJV now, KJV if you can, for a change, KJV. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel. Let's go now. One, two, three, go. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. An assignment, the power of the gospel. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence, the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel. The gospel certainly has power. And that power leads to salvation. Um, part of the motivation to teach this short message this morning is twofold. Number one, to help you examine whether or not you are truly born again based on scripture. It's one thing to attend a church for a long time. A church may not be able to transform you until you go through the protocol and the process in scripture as to how to be born again. Number two, it is also deliberate to help us understand the process of salvation so that we can also in turn be able to explain it or to be witness to those around us. You see, you cannot evangelize or witness the gospel except you know what the gospel is. So you must know what it is, then you can explain it or share it with others. Now, the gospel in simple words means good news, good news. Now, the NLT version of the scripture we read hitherto, Romans 1, 16 says, For I am not ashamed of this good news. All right? I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes the Jew first and also the Gentile. Now, the KJV says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. All right. It is the power of God unto salvation. That means there can be no salvation except the gospel is released. All right. It is the power of God unto salvation. So uh, songs don't get people saved. Giving gifts of love, of kindness does not get people saved. And other things of niceness or kindness won't get you saved. What the Bible says, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. 
Now, that means automatically there is a connection between the word of God, which is the gospel, all right, and salvation, all right. There is a link between the word of God and salvation. Hear this. In 2 Timothy 3.15, talking about Timothy, uh, Paul says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, all right, which are able so the holy scriptures has ability to do something let's know what it does okay so thou has known the holy scriptures right which are able to make thee wise unto salvation we'll land there again to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus so we see again the strong connection between the word of god the gospel and salvation it becomes so interesting that Paul begins to talk about this gospel and refers to it, which is the preaching of it, as foolishness. Foolishness. Bible declares in 2 Corinthians 1.17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, that is not to say it's not important, but simply saying, I wasn't sent to that primarily, right? I was rather sent to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of non-effect. Number one, it means it is possible for the cross to be made of non-effect. Not that it's non-effect, but non-effect to those who receive it, all right? If it is not communicated properly and accurately, the cross cannot be without effect. It has power to save, all right? But Paul says that I, I, I preach the gospel not 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 with with, with 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 the ways and manner men may teach it but by the power of the lord i proclaim not with it said so, so let's cause be, should be made non effect verse 18 where i'm going i said for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of god unto us who are saved it is the power of God. Listen carefully. Now, the gospel has power, number one, to save a man from sin, all right, from being spiritually dead to becoming alive in Christ. That is the new birth. We'll see what it is now. Okay, so the gospel has that power. But listen carefully. The gospel also has the same power to take you progressively in salvation. All right, that word salvation is all encompassing salvation to your spirit, man, the renewal of your soul, uh, the strength of your body, the healing of your body. They're all facets and levels and degrees of salvation. But what we do know is the new birth experience that's good, but also in addition to just being born, not just born again, it's amazing, it's the greatest miracle. All right, but it's a full package that means. We don't stop at seeing the kingdom or entering the kingdom, but we should desire to progress in our growth of maturity in the kingdom. Peter says that we being born again, present continuous, being born again by what? By the incorruptible word or incorruptible seed of God's word. That means this word gets you born again as a child of God, which is an amazing mystery, amazing miracle. But the same word that got you saved is what you need to progress in your growth and your maturity as a believer. Paul says it is foolishness of the gospel. That means really it's, it doesn't make sense to preach somebody gets saved, moves from hell literally and headed towards heaven, move from sickness to health. That is in the mind of human being is foolishness but to the saved it is the power of god hallelujah somebody shout a big amen amen now when the gospel is preached quite a number of things happen number one faith comes as you've heard me say over and over again as water is to wet so faith is to the word of god all right water makes you wet likewise the word produces faith all right as water is to wet likewise the word is to faith so no word no faith little word little faith much word much faith praise god so if you want to get faith it's not far-fetched it's not a mystery we have the answer romans 10 17 says now 
faith oh so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god ah yeah faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god once he spoke twice i heard that power belongs to god listen carefully when you begin to listen to god's word listen carefully don't you get discouraged if you think it's not having the effect you desire ah, yeah yeah don't you think that you're not getting understanding you may think your mind is blocked it's not making sense to you listen carefully keep on hearing keep on hearing keep on hearing it comes upon you here uh, it saturates you enough to bring about understanding and the moment understanding comes faith comes and faith quickens your heart to believe god for what you're hearing so the enemy will tell you oh well you're in this word of faith nothing really is changing i feel pain in my back my neck is not working all the enemy is trying to make you do is to stop to hear but listen so then faith comes not by hearing once hearing and hearing by the word of god so keep on hearing the word of the lord now let's do a little bible study romans 10 is quite instructive regarding salvation and new birth romans 10 is quite instructive regarding salvation and two birth. remember the primary purpose of this teaching as brief as it is number one to provoke you to challenge you to ask you whether you're really born again based on scripture you may be religious maybe in church but are you born again number two to show you what it means to be born again so you can be able to explain it as simple as abc you won't doubt again how to proclaim the word of god when you understand what it means to be born again now let's go romans 10 let's journey from 8 to 13. romans 10 8 to 13. but what saith it the words, or rather the word, is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Hmm. So the word of God is not far-fetched. As long as you can get the word of God in your mouth, the word of God will enter into your heart. All right? So the word that doesn't come to your mouth will not enter your heart. Because the heart has gateways, the eye gate, the ear gate, and the mouth gate. If you want to put anything in the heart, it will go through any or all of those gates, seeing, hearing, which is provoked by speaking, speech. All right. So once the word is in your mouth, it's going to get into your heart. All right. The word of faith, that's what we preach, all right? Which we preach. We preach the word of faith unashamedly, all right? That if thou shalt confess, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, all right? Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. So this is the process of salvation. Number one, speak the word for it to get into your heart and then with your heart, you believe and then with your mouth you confess let's go it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shalt believe in thine heart there's no point confessing what you don't believe really all right so it is the fact that you believe what you're confessing that gives it power if thou shalt confess or declare god's word and believe in your heart what do you believe that God raised him from the dead. Before we believe that, we must believe that God sent Jesus in human flesh. All right. He became sin. We'll get there shortly. He became the totality of sin. He did not commit any sin at all. He became sin. All right. He took on sin, the nature of sin. He hung on the cross. He was crucified. He died. So his birth, his death, his burial. That's not all. The final part of the story was that he rose from the dead. Praise God, somebody. He rose from the, he came, he died, but he rose from the dead. Now it says, and God has been raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All right. So we're never told that what it takes to get saved is to stop drinking or stop smoking. Don't get me wrong. When you do get saved, you would dislike the things you once liked. Say amen. But you see, you can stop drinking and stop smoking and still go to hell. 
That's the point I'm making now. You can be morally sound, even more morally, morally sound than somebody who's born again, heaven bound, and, and still be headed to hell because it, it's not, you see, religions of the world tells you primarily, almost every religion, uh, that is about you doing good and, and do more good than bad. Then on the judgment day, God will weigh good and bad, good and bad. If good is more, you go to heaven or paradise. If bad is more, you go to hell. That's not true. That's religion. That does not work as far as Christ is concerned. Listen carefully. The only way you and I will access heaven is if we access in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If we access in his name. All right, so it's not about your good works. Your good works are important. They come after the new birth. All right, yes, because you're born again, you will do good works and you will be rewarded for good works. No, but you're not saved by good works. Say amen. Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. All right, we are saved by grace through faith saved by grace so grace is what saves us all right but we access grace by faith and it says even at that it is the gift of god praise god somebody so we see simply what it means to be born again to believe with your heart to confess with your mouth that what that jesus christ was risen from the dead if he was risen he was born died and then rose let's continue now it says for with the heart Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You know, sometimes people actually may get born again, but the enemy begins to confuse them, make them feel uncertain as to really whether they are saved or not. That's why you've got to believe the Bible. <laughs> we're only saved based on how the Bible said we're to be saved. We're not saved by how we feel. All right. Sometimes you will not feel like you want to feel. Uh, in the day and age we're living now, somebody wakes up, clearly born a man from his mother's womb, says, I don't feel like a man. I feel like a woman. So what? Keep your feelings. You're a man. Look at what you got between your legs. You're clearly a man. So your feelings should never determine to you who you are. All right? What determines who you are? Your birth. Your birth. Your birth. Let's continue. He says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich. Unto who? All that call upon him so so salvation is for all all who dare to call upon him shall be saved verse 13 says for whosoever which means this is inclusive of whosoever that will meet this condition and the, it's not far-fetched it's not not a not a, not a, a serious con no no just to believe and confess whosoever means me or you all right shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved. That's scripture. That settles it. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth generally, you shall be saved based on scripture. And verse 14 and 15 says, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? So we, we begin to see the importance of preaching the gospel. All right. For you to believe, no. For you to be saved, you must believe. For you to believe, you must hear the preaching. For you to get the preaching, somebody must be, must be standing to preach, preach the gospel. So without the preaching of the gospel, there can be no faith, no faith, no salvation. And it, the chain goes on. This is the import of preaching the gospel. Many things happen, but number one, faith comes. But number two also, conviction comes by the Holy Ghost when we proclaim the gospel. Faith and conviction. All right. What is the gospel? What is the good news? The price of redemption has been fully paid. Fully paid. Fully paid. And as a result of that price being fully paid, all sinners were that exception. It's no big sin, no small sin in that sense. As far as God is concerned, all sinners have access to repent and then be born again. All sinners 
have access to repent and then be born again. Why? On the account of the birth of Jesus, the death of Jesus, his burial, and his resurrection. Hear this. 2 Peter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but it's long suffering to us word not willing that any anyone at all should perish but that all should come to repentance i want you in your mind to circle the word repentance i uh, repentance repentance is key to salvation ah. it's not enough to believe the gospel all right salvation is twofold one believe in the gospel then on account of believing the gospel you now repent then you can be saved are you here it's a two-sided coin for salvation you believe but as you believe there must be repentance we'll get there hopefully we begin to understand through our scripture that jesus came to the earth to identify with fallen man. Uh, the Bible says he became sin that we might be made his righteousness. All right. So he identified with fallen man, but he also served as a substitute for fallen man. All right. All through scripture, we see all kinds of sacrifice of lambs, bulls, all kinds of things. Those sacrifices as many as they were the many offers they were foreshadow of the lamb of god that will be sacrificed when john saw jesus appear he said behold look at him behold the not a lamb the lamb of god that taketh away not the sins the sin of the world all right so what jesus came to deal with listen carefully it's not the fruits on the tree, the many expressions of sin, lying, cheating, killing, fornication, adultery, greed, jealousy, malice, wonderful. He came to deal a blow to the root of sin. Hello, somebody? He literally cut the, uh, the tree from the root so that sin has been dealt with. As he hung on the cross, spread wide, it was sin that was being nailed on the cross. Praise the Lord, somebody. So note these two words, substitution, no, identification and substitution. He came to identify with you as a fallen man. He took our place, so, and he also took our place in death. Hallelujah. All right. Now, I want to share with you very simply in the next few minutes, uh, the ABC of salvation. This is good for you to help filter whether you're born again or not. But number two, primarily, it will help you to be able to proclaim and to share the gospel. Very simple ways. A. A is to accept that every human being born into this world, listen carefully, was born in sin. All right? Before I knew how to lie, how to cheat, uh, I came out of my mother's womb, listen carefully, uh, sin was in my blood. It was there. I only learned and mastered the, the sins as I grew older. All right. So, so we're all born in sin. Now, the Bible says in, in Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. Shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Conceived in sin, shaped in iniquity, born in iniquity. So every human being, we came loaded with sin. Say amen. That's the first step. All right. We need to accept that everyone was born in sin. Hear this. Romans 3, 23 to 24. ABC of salvation. For all have sinned, my God, without exception. All right. And come short of the glory of, of God. All right. It says, uh, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ 
Jesus. So when you fall short of the glory of God, there is a consequence for that. So number one, believe. All are born in sin. Number two, be. Or let me say, the consequence of that is found in Romans 6.23. The consequence is for the wages of sin. You know what wages? Wages salary. Wages salary. That means as you're living your life as a not born again, you're working for the enemy. Incidentally, it's a sin. Yeah. And, and Bible says there is a wage. There's a reward. There's a payment. And the, the payment of sin is death. Is there? So for the wages or the salary of sin is death. But, thank God for the but. Hello, somebody. <laughs> but the gift, not your, not your labor, uh, not what you work for. The gift of God haya, is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank God for the gift of eternal life. It's a gift. It's a gift. You can't labor for it. You can't work hard enough. You can't toil hard enough. Even, even if you chose to die for your own sins, your blood will not pay the price. You know why? There's sin in your blood. There had to be a sinless lamb of sacrifice whose blood was sufficient to pay the price for every human being who will accept the price he paid. So, A, accept we're born in sin and the consequence of sin is death. Now, B, believe that Christ has dealt completely a blow against the sin problem of mankind. John 3, 16 to 17. For God so loved the world. Aren't you grateful you, he loves you? Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Hmm? The word believe again. Believeth, should not perish. But have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That the world through him might be saved. Jesus is a complete answer to the fall of man. The sin of man was dealt with by his coming, his birth, his death, his burial, and his ultimate resurrection. C. C. ABC of salvation. Confess, as we saw in Romans 10, confess having believed in your heart unto righteousness you confess that jesus christ is your personal lord and savior not just one who came to save the world but you make it personal that i'm inviting you to take over the driving wheel of my life and my destiny i cease to live for myself I cease to live for my own pleasure and delight. I want you to live your life through me. Confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord. John 1, 12 and 13 says, But as many as received, so the key is to receive him, received him, how do you receive him? By believing and confessing. All right. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which are which were which were born, not of blood, not of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. I'll leave you with this verse, Acts 20, verse 20 and 21. Just to buttress what I mentioned earlier, that salvation needs two things: faith, repentance. Faith, repent. If you have one without the other, there's no salvation. Faith, repentance. Let's look at it. It's a Bible class. Roman, sorry, Acts 20, 20 to 21. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but showed you, and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. 21. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Hear this. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So repentance and faith. When the word comes, faith comes. But the response of faith should be repentance. Repentance. Accepting that you are a sinner by nature. And then inviting him to take over. That is true repentance. 
It is true repentance that brings true salvation. This morning, rise on your feet and thank the Lord for the good news, the power of the gospel. Can you lift your voice for one minute? Let's bless the Lord for the good news. I am. Uh, he has paid the price for the sins of the entire human race, born and unborn. Wow. Kabaloskata. No one can go so far that they cannot return. Aya. He said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. James 4, 8. Can you bless the Lord for the gospel? Wow. The power of salvation. Bless the Lord for the good news. He said, as far as the east is from the west. So he has removed our sins from us. Somebody bless the Lord. More than gold, more than silver, more than money, more than honey is salvation. Hallelujah. Can you bless the Lord? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We're going to pray just in case there is anybody here who is not born again online on site. Hallelujah. Anyone who is not born again online on site, let us pray today. Or you're in doubt of your salvation. You can't remember when you said that prayer sincerely. You're not sure. You can be sure today. You just heard the scripture. Let's all pray together. Declare me Heavenly Father. I want to hear you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the power of the gospel, the good news to me. Lord Jesus, once again, I've heard the simplicity of the gospel again. With my heart, I believe unto righteousness. Now with my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. From today and for the rest of my days, I decree and declare by the grace and mercy of God, I will live completely. I will live wholeheartedly for Jesus who died for me and rose again triumphantly. I am blood washed. I am blood bought. Child of the living God. In the name of Jesus, somebody celebrate if you know your God's child with a clap. Celebrate with a clap. Welcome all online on site to this service. May the heavens open wider and may God bless us incredibly with signs and wonders and miracles. In Jesus' name, receive the ministry of Christ of Judah. Hallelujah. Somebody give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. If you have a testimony, Pastor God is waiting for you at the foyer. Please do well to go there and share your testimony. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, Roche. Somebody said, let the glory rise among us. Hallelujah. The song says, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of us.
This morning, oh God, our spirit reaches out to you, oh God. Have your way in this place. Make your name known in this church. Let your will be done in Nigeria. Have your way, oh God, this morning. Let your word come with power just as the worship is, oh God. And let your people be delivered. Let grace come for righteousness. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen. Thank you so much. Please celebrate this choir. They are the best. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are not going to break this tempo as you take your seat for one minute. So please just be in that same atmosphere of his presence. Hallelujah. We are praying for Nigeria. We are also taking prayers for passion and burden for soul winning to be baptized and fresh in all of Rogic centers. Hallelujah. Just as the move has begun as we heard the testimony of Oweri. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we're praying for the core value of this week, which is the spirit of excellence. And we'll take some written testimonies and we'll pray for the word. Hallelujah. I want to say a very big thank you to my father, Apostle Goodhart. God bless you, Papa. Were you blessed by morning glory this morning? I'm saying thank you to my Papa and you are not doing anything. Now celebrate God if you can. Hallelujah. Amen. That was so profound. And it will help us to pray for Nigeria this morning. There is hope for this nation. Amen. Job 11, 23 to 24. I'm reading NIV. He makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nations and he disperses them. He deprives the leaders of the earth of their reason and make them wander in a tactless waste. May that not be the portion of this nation in, in Jesus' name. I want you to rise up to your feet and begin to say, Father, be, let Nigeria be the nation that you will enlarge. May we not be the nation that God will scatter, will disperse. May we not be the people that their leaders, God will push into a waste. In the name of Jesus, somebody begin to pray for Nigeria. There is hope for Nigeria. There is a reason why we are still standing. There is a reason why war has not bro broken out in this nation. So somebody begin to pray for your nation. And our Father, may we be the nation that is you. In spite and despite of all that God has done, do not allow the nation to be the same. Ah, may your Lord have mercy on our nation. Ah, may your Lord have mercy on our nation. Ah, may your Lord have mercy on our nation. Ah, may your Lord have mercy on our it's a pass up at a barrack at the break of the dead. Ah, let his manifestation begin with us in the name of the Lord. Ah, Father, let us be the second of Papa Bosha Sabayagados. Because we know that we are going to be the first of the Lord. Even in this nation, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Do you believe Nigeria is going to be great? Do you believe he has begun already? It's beginning in Rajik in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are praying for passion. See, passion cannot be taught, but it can be contacted. So hold your brother's hand. Hold your sister's hand as we begin to pray for passion, for body and for souls. Hallelujah. We are praying, Apostle God has used that scripture. God is awesome. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3, 9. And he says, the Lord does not delay and it's not... Um, tardy or slow about what he promises according to some people's conception of slowness but he is long suffering extraordinarily patient towards you not desiring that any should perish but that all should turn to repentance stop judging that brother the bible says no no man in the flesh so now begin to pray and say father give us in logic and home the passion and burden for soul winning give us the passion for lost souls ah somebody can be saved if god can save Saul, he can save that boy he can save that girl ah father lord give us a passion in this church give us a passion we are not a viva house of glory for name that's who we truly are 
Let the passion for souls, oh God, consume us. Is somebody praying? I cannot hear a praying church. If you desire that none will perish, let it become our desire. Let it become our passion. Ah, let us begin to see one another and not be looking for each other. Help us, oh God. Help us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Never again will any soul be lost that has come across us. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are praying this morning for our core value. Somebody say the spirit of excellence. When you look at everybody's seatedness, you will see how they are dressed. There is something about blue this morning. When Papa walked in, I and Pastor Nelly looked at our, ourselves and said, another blue. Mm. There is something about blue this morning. God will beautify the life of somebody and make it excellent in the name of Jesus. And so we are going to be praying for the spirit of excellence. And we are praying Daniel 6.3. NKJV. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to set him. Hallelujah. May the spirit of excellence be found in us that the government of Nigeria will come to us for advice. In the name of Jesus, I want somebody to begin to pray that that spirit of excellence, which is our core value, will become our lifestyle. That is the way we live. That is the way we move. That is the way we walk. No longer will we be too tardy. We will not be reckless in our manner of speaking. We will not be reckless in our ma manner of movement. In this house, the spirit of excellence excellence works. It works in every one of us. In the name of Jesus, we are a people commanded by God's spirit to be excellent. And that is who we are. And that is what we represent. And because of that, no soul can be lost that has come in contact with us. And because of that, when we pray for Nigeria, we see the manifestation of it because we walk in that spirit of excellence. Ah, this is the reason why Daniel was able to work with different governments. And so, Heavenly Father, in logic and in harm, Ah, the spirit of excellence reigns supreme. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I will take, you may be seated now as I take some written um, testimonies and then we stand up and pray for the word. And um, Brother White Samuel is saying it is working. Somebody say it is working. Hallelujah. It is working. He said his mother went for a major surgery and it was successful and she's out and recuperating. He's thanking God for delivering his father from an accident that destroyed the car but did not destroy his father's life. Somebody thank God. Are you just watching? God did it. He's blessing God for granting his wife admission and also providing money for it. Hallelujah. Amen. He's also thanking God for adding another year to his daughter's life. She is strong and doing well. Hallelujah. He's also thanking God for promoting his brother and giving his sister a new job. Hallelujah. This brother is a galore of testimony and it's happening. If it's happening to somebody, you know you are next in line. Hallelujah. And then he's thanking God for warrior moms. Somebody thank God for warrior moms. Hallelujah. Clap and thank God for that altar of fire. He's saying that this altar has given them the grace to pray. And yesterday was something else. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we thank you for warrior moms. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. And Sister Lolo is thanking God for the successful burial of her friend. Everything went well to the glory of God. Now stand to your feet. If you know that you are alive by yourself, you can take Take your time to stand up. But if you are alive by the grace of God, jump to your feet, have a smile on your face, and begin to say, Father, this morning you will do it again. The world is about to come. He did it in morning glory. As the world comes now, something will happen to you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says the entrance of God's word. It gives light and understanding. I'm reading Psalm 119 verse 130. His word gives light and understanding. Somebody that is confused this morning, you will receive understanding in the name of Jesus. For somebody that is sick this morning, you will receive divine health in the name of Jesus. Is somebody already praying? Now begin to pray and say, Father, let the man of God track the mind of God and let God track the man of God 
so that the man of God will remain in the place of God to deliver the mind of God this morning. As the word comes, let the light be profound and let the simple receive it. Oh, Father, let your word this morning come with power. Let it come with simplicity and let the simple heart receive it profoundly. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. As the glory of God is in this place, it's also in the youth church. So I want to encourage you, if you have a youth that is sitting with you, let that youth go to the youth church now and be blessed in the prepared place. Because God is waiting for that youth there. That is where God will do it. Because as it's happening here, he's also had a tailor-made message for them. So please send the youth to the youth church where God will bless them indeed in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you this morning because we know you are ready. Ah, we are ready to eat of your table. That which you have prepared for this morning, our life will not miss in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we know the glory is already here. We thank you because we know there is activity of angels even in our midst. This morning, oh God, have your way. Let no man ah, say that he did not see. Let no man say that he did not hear. Let no man say that you did not touch him because you will touch each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can I hear a resounding amen? Amen. Welcome this wonderful choir. Right where you're seated, can you just speak in the spirit? Just praying the Holy Ghost right there. Praying the Holy Ghost. Praying the Holy Ghost. the 
wanna burn. I wanna burn for you. I wanna burn for you. Burn for you. Say I. I want to be ready when you come. I want to hear you say well done. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Until the coming of the king. I want to be ready when you come. I want to hear you say well done. the coming of the king you see the difference between the foolish and the wise there were all virgins they were all waiting for their lord but the wise had oil and the foolish had no oil. Now that you have the privilege and the opportunity to buy, go and buy. Emanarati Safaladi, buy in prayer. Emanarato Safali Teko Masaira, buy in genuine service to the king. Emanarati Supami Hata. I want to be ready when you come. I want to hear you so well done. Want to hear you so well. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Until the coming of the King. Give me all your life. May my life never be deep. When you come, I want to be ready when you come. I want to be ready when you come. I want to hear you 
say well done. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Keep me burning. To the coming of the King. I want to burn for you. I want to burn for you. We have sung the song that we are going to pray. Because there was a parable of the ten virgins. All who are virgins and all who are Christians. And then the Bible said at midnight there was a cry. And they all woke up. And five had oil, but five did not have oil. And in verse 10, the Bible said that the ones that did not have oil, when they went, they went to buy. So they knew what to do. They knew who took prayer and consecration and intimacy. They knew the mysteries of the kingdom. But they were complacent. But the Bible says in verse 10, Matthew 25 verse 10, that they that were ready, they that were ready, they that had oil, they went with the bridegroom. And the ones that lacked oil, the door was shut. For somebody, this prayer is a matter of destiny. There is what we call divine timings in life. Lord, may I not slack oil at the season of my appearing. Can somebody pray? May I not slack oil at the season of my visitation? telling Timothy, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. This is what it means to have oil. That in the journey of life, you fight the good fight of faith and you are victorious. But number two, that you fulfill destiny and purpose. You finish your course. But number three, you don't lose your salvation while you are walking in greatness. I have kept the faith. Give us oil in our lamps, O oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you, house of Judah. Please celebrate them. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Please, while you are still standing, do me the honor and the favor of truly honoring and celebrating my father, your father, Apostle Peter Tobi Thank you, sir, for your leadership, your mentorship, 
I give you all my respect and love. So thank you, Pastor Bibo. God bless you. Thank you, ma. Pastor Dan, listen, Pastor Dan, Pastor Dulu, God bless you. Our dear pastors, leaders, deacons, MIT, and everyone, God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There are days and there are certain days, oh. There are certain days. There are days when heaven touches the earth. And I believe so strongly that the word you are about to hear this blessed morning is going to bring a banquet of light. Light that will shift you forward. Light that will set perspective. Light that will help us to begin to walk in the purpose of that which we were called to be. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'll read the anchor scripture and then we can take our seats. The title is called Anakazo, the compelling power of the gospel. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 14 verse 21 to 23. And the Bible says KJV. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servants, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what, have you, what you have commanded has been done and there's still more room. More people can be saved. And the master said to the servants, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. We decree and declare that this word will bring edification, light, illumination, direction to us all in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified, even as your bride, your body, your church is edified. For in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Please take your seats. We read a very interesting story about a man. He prepared a banquet, and this was an example of the kingdom of God that there was the good news to be shared. Hallelujah. What is the good news? Let me just divert a bit so that we can do a recap of what we learned earlier this morning at Morning Glory. What is the good news? The good news is that Jesus has paid the price. Jesus has paid the price. He has died for our sins and that we have a good news to share. We learned earlier that there's the ABC of salvation. That this is how you know that you are truly saved and how you can communicate this salvation to everyone. Everyone. A is to accept that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that all have been condemned. That is found, I believe, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, when the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short. And the Bible also tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. So there was a bad situation going on in the world that everyone had fallen short of the glory and everyone deserved death and condemnation. Hallelujah. But then this is where the good news came. The B part is that you will believe that Jesus has dealt a fatal blow, a knockout to sin and death once and for all. Hallelujah. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that if anyone will believe in him, they shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. And then the C part is that it's not just one in, enough to believe. Believing is one part of the coin. The second part of the coin is that you now confess. Hallelujah. You confess in repentance and you confess in declaration that Jesus is indeed your own personal Lord and your Savior. So when you are going to preach to others and share the good news, these are the three simple things. It is not complicated. These are the simple ways that the gospel is shared. A, to accept the bad news, the bad story, what's the reality of man, but B, to believe that Jesus has come to change the story and C, to declare and to confess it. So we'll go back to this story that we read as the anchor scripture. There was a man that prepared the banquet. He prepared a mighty feast and this was supposed to be the good news, that a man was preparing something of celebration and then when you begin to read from the, the verses, you see that he first invited three sets of people. One said that I'm sorry that I have to attend to my land so I cannot come. Another said, I'm sorry, but I have to attend to my oxen. The third said, I've just gotten married so I cannot come. And the Bible records that this man was very angry. 
he now told his servants, go back. How can I have such a good news? How can I have such a gospel? And human beings will reject it because of pleasure, because of comfort, or because of chasing the affairs of this life. He said, go back. Go and reach out to the lame, the maimed, the sick, and bring them. And the servant, a faithful servant, did just that. But the Bible records that there was still room. In other words, God is patient. There are still more people that should be saved. And God now, and the man now said, go to the highways and the byways and he said compel them to come the word compel is from the greek word anakazo it means a constraint to force somebody to enter i love the bible though the bible is telling us clearly that when invitation does not work there's another thing we can do to win people for jesus what happens when you have preached to people for decades and for different for times and said give your life to christ give your life to jesus you have invited them you have done the work of the evangelist but the bible is telling us that there are sometimes there are some very unique peculiarities there are cases where a mere invitation is not enough because people are carried away by the desires of this life. People are bound by Satan. And so the Lord gives us a remedy again in scripture. That when it comes to this category of people. Then what you do in addition to preaching. Because you will still go out and invite them. But this time around you bring an akazo, The compelling power of God. Hallelujah. So this is what we are examining today. How do we bring the gospel with power? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus Christ said that you shall be endued with what? Power from on high. And then you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, both in Jerusalem and Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So Jesus, the, Jesus is giving us an instruction that you will need the power of God, power to be a witness, power to compel people to come but then i saw something amazing in this same scripture jesus began to give us a jurisdiction of how to dispense this power he mentioned four different places he mentioned jerusalem he mentioned judea he mentioned samaria and he mentioned the uttermost parts of the earth many scholars will believe that these were just physical geographical locations to have access to but we will understand by the spirit of truth and by light that apart from being a physical instruction it had very spiritual components to it that you must effectively dispense power in your Jerusalem you must be effective in dispensing power in your Judea you must be effective in dispensing the power of a witness in your Samaria and you must be effective in dispensing the power of a witness in the uttermost parts of the earth hallelujah can we examine Jerusalem first what is Jerusalem Jerusalem talks about our family family both biological and spiritual you know the issue with Jerusalem is because uh, they have heard the same gospel you have heard they went to the same churches you went to they went to the same Sunday school you went to it's just that when they got older they said they are not following God so when you come with the gospel and say Jesus died for you they will even help you complete the message and tell you bros I have heard this many times but can you pack that aside so with Jerusalem, they are very difficult to win because they have gotten a level of knowledge that did not bring deliverance. And so they are trapped in that knowledge. So with these ones, when we deal with our Jerusalem, it will take power. In the book of Acts chapter 2 from verse 4 to 6, the Bible says when the day of the Pentecost came, they, were, they began to be filled with the Spirit and they began to pray as God gave them utterance. Look at what happened in verse 6. Something very interesting happened. And the Bible says, and when the sound was noised abroad, there came a multitude together and everyone was confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Look at the sequence first. It took prayer to generate power. The Bible says that their prayer was noised abroad. Please, who noised it abroad? Was it the same people that were praying? No, it could not have been the same people because they were praying. Something else brought everybody to hear what they were doing. Number three, the third sequence was that power was generated. The Bible said they understood the tongues in their own language. So their attention was captured. And then number four, they, they now had the patience to listen as Peter shared the gospel. What happened here in the realm of the spirit was that these people were not invited or no. They were compelled by Anakazo. 
power was generated and the power had a multifaceted dimension of it and so they heard something that attracted them and they came and God is saying that if we must deal effectively with our Jerusalem the same way we saw it with these people we must walk in dimensions of power that compels it goes beyond English again it goes beyond mere English. There must be something greater, a greater force that we can use to draw them to come. Hallelujah. But look at the issue. When it comes to Jerusalem, it is the gospel of power and it's the gospel of priesthood. What do I mean? It takes prayer to build power. And the Bible tells us that they were praying in one accord. It takes a, a, an effectual generation of power for the realm of the spirit to bring them in. But this power is only found in priesthood and the bible tells us in ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 it says i searched for a man not a pastor i searched for a man that will make up the head and stand in the gap but god said i found none i found none if we want to be a people that through our lives and our priesthood these people are brought out of darkness and they come to the light, then we must all become that man that God is searching for. Hallelujah. Can I show you how interesting it is to become that man? Because people think it's very simple. No, sir. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm 24, from verse 3 to 4, the Bible says, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? And the Bible begins to list the requirements of what it means to become a man. Very quickly, can I have five people just to show us an analogy of how interesting it is that a man can begin to walk in power and compel Jerusalem to come. Just stand behind me and just spread out. Thank you very much. I hope you are not shy. You will join me today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Bible says, who shall ascend? In the, to the hill of the Lord who shall stand in his holy place as a spiritual intercession that can bring men to come the Bible says number one he that has what? he that has what? clean hands so this is the power of the Holy Spirit I came to one person I said can you be the man that I'm looking for can you stand in the gap so that a family can be saved so that people in church can be saved I looked at you you gave your life to Jesus fantastic and I begin to walk with you now we're trying to go to the place of the encounter the place where people are ordained the place where people are empowered for glory but look at us as we are walking Oh dear, something has gone wrong. Somebody say little foxes. Somebody say little foxes. So as we go, this is the Holy Spirit moving him. He pulls us back. Little foxes that spoil the vine. This person, he loves me. He loves God. He loves Jesus. But the failure to deal with the little foxes has frustrated his advancement and his growth to the promised land. And so little foxes be, continue to stop him. And we go back and forth. And the precious, patient Holy Spirit, I'm waiting. Can you fix up one day? Can you purge yourself by repentance and prayer? But guess what? He loves me. Oh, it's just that he loves the pleasures of life as well. And the Bible says the parable of the seed. There are ones that fell by thorny sides. These are the things that choke the power and the potency of the seed. And look at what I say. I say I, I will, you will still be saved because you confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. But I cannot bring you to use you as that man. Because the way you have opened yourself and opened the hedge. If I use you at that level, Satan will strike you. And so after 10 years old, painfully so, I say please go back. How many years have passed? 10 years and people are still unsaved. 10 years and altars in families, in churches are still speaking like God is not working. And then I find somebody else. What is the next part apart from clean hands? And a pure heart. Look at the interesting thing with this, my brother. This one has not drank a call since he was born. He has not known a woman since he became married. And even after marriage, he only known, knew one woman. This person lived as a good boy. He was good from the beginning to the end. Everything about him was good. But I'm seeing a problem that no man can see. On the outward, we are seeing righteousness and the works of righteousness. But something has happened on his inside. Pride has taken over. He has felt so good in his self-righteousness that he thinks he's better than everyone. He came to church as a leader. Now they did not acknowledge him. He now became offended with the pastor. So this same person now, although outwardly no alcohol, no womanizing, no stealing, inwardly he's living in malice, 
Inwardly, he's in bitterness. Inwardly, unforgiveness. And the Bible says, who shall ascend? He that has a what? Pure heart. I saw something very interesting in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, when Samuel was going to anoint somebody, he saw, he saw Eliab and he said, behold, surely this is the anointed before him. Please, Samuel is a mature prophet. So Samuel does not make mistakes. It's just that something happened in verse 7. Look at what God said. God said unto Samuel, look not at his countenance. Look not at his stature. Look not at his outward works. He says, because I have what? Refused him. If God refused somebody, it means that God once upon a time considered you. May we not be refused in Jesus' name. For you to be refused or rejected, it means once upon a time, you are under consideration. So outwardly, you are looking good. Everyone was clapping for you. But the pride of the heart, malice, bitterness, unforgiveness is what disqualified this person. I tried for another 10 years. I tried to break him. He lost his job. He lost this so that he could come to this place of repentance and brokenness. But I now saw that unfortunately, even in the valley, he was still proud. Have you seen things like that? There are men that waste their wilderness home. There are men that waste their valley experience. And then after 10 years, I said, no. I'm the Lord my God. I search the hearts. I, I weigh men by their hearts. I lift men by the state of their hearts. Who do I come unto? He that has a broken and a contrite spirit. And so although physically this man passed everything, but in the, in the, in the realm of the heart where no man sees, there was a disqualification. How many years have passed? 20 years, sir. And the Holy Spirit again patiently looking. Who can be that man? that can stand in the hedge as a hedge and make up the gap who can be that man that i will use on earth to deliver and god begins to look and then i find somebody this is the patient holy spirit will you finally be that person i've waited for two decades and i've not yet seen help can you be that person what was the third thing who has not lifted up his soul towards vanity this guy was a prayer warrior he was in the choir. He loved God. He did everything well. He did everything right. But unfortunately, he loved the world. He loved the pleasures of this world. He served mammon and God. Hallelujah. He, he was good. He was consistent in church. So I was lifting him forward. Per adventure, I found a faithful man. But unfortunately, because of the love of this world, he could not sacrifice for me. Who remembers the rich young ruler? Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16. The rich young guy asked Jesus, what can I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus began to list everything down. Look at what he told Jesus. He says, all of these things I have done since my youth. He was a good guy from his youth. But the Bible says something very interesting in verse 22. Jesus said, you, you are good or I like you, but you lack one thing. Sell all your possessions and follow me. See what the Bible says in verse 22. And when the man heard that saying, he went away because he was sorrowful, because he had what? Great possessions. So this was me moving him, but by himself, he left my hand and he went back. You can go back. The rich young ruler. And I'm looking for a man. It's taking me 30 years now. Somebody was good, but they loved the world more than they loved me. There were idols in their hearts, things that they prioritized. And I'm wondering, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who can come and stand in the gap here? And I begin to look again. I've passed 30 years and I'm looking. I've found somebody. Now, this one is now walking in humility. Wow, he's broken. Okay, there's, there's hope now. There's something that can go well here. He loves me. I've tested him with seed and sacrifice. There's nothing he cannot give up for me. I'm excited. It has taken me 30 whole years. I need to get this agenda caught up and running. And we are walking. And then what did the Bible say finally? Huh? Has sworn what? Deceitfully. This one is the most terrifying, but it's also the funniest. Revelations chapter 21 from verse 6 thereabouts. The Bible says something very interesting from 6 to 8. It says something very, very scary. It's when it talks about warmongers and adulterers, it says that there are people that will enter the lake of fire. And the Bible mentioned what? Liars. 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 That liars also, along with sorcerers and warmongers, will be the people that will enter the kingdom of darkness. Who would have thought that this man, although he was a good person, but the lying what? 
the lying tongue is what disqualified him. James says something interesting in James chapter 3 verse 10 to 11. He says that a mouth that brings forth blessing, can it bring forth curses at the same time? Can a fountain that brings forth pure waters also bring forth bitter? So the same mouth you want to use to proclaim the gospel is the same mouth you want to use to lie. And God said not so. God said not so. So why this one was cheated? It was not because of pride was not because of sin. It was that white lie. <laughs> that white lie that did not cause harm. But in the realm of the spirit, we fail to understand that Satan is called the father of lies. Could it be that every time we told that lie, that gentle lie, what we were doing was pledging allegiance to Satan? He that has not sworn deceitfully. And then, and God said not so. Forty years have passed in Jerusalem. In 40 years, there was someone that was 40 years old and now he's 80. That person has died though and he never knew Jesus. That person has died and never had a chance of salvation because what was, what was keeping them in that family, there were ancient altars that were very strong, bringing blindness, veils and covering and the Spirit of God is searching and then I find somebody else. 42 years have passed. Hopefully this will be the person now. Hopefully this will be the person. Now this man was not perfect. He had little boxes. He fell and he rose. He fell and he rose. But I saw something that his heart was pure. He did not care about reputation. did not care about what people thought. He just wanted to please God. God was his number one priority. And I said that although you are not perfect, I think I can work with you. Let me work with you and let me make you a fisher of men. So for four, five years, there was back and forth, falling and rising, falling and rising. But because his heart was right, he walked in repentance, a posture of of repentance and brokenness number one he had that reverential fear of God and he sought after intimacy with the Holy Spirit he pursued holiness with all of his heart by the way those are the four things apostle listed at the at the what they call it at the at the crossover service those are the four key points and he pursued this now he pursued all of those things but it still took time because man is still flesh but by the seventh year I realized that he dropped the little foxes he walked with me with grace and finally we get to the place and God now says after 49 years after 49 years four decades and counting I have found what I have found a man I have found someone that can make up the gap that can stand in this place and then deliverance comes please can we celebrate them the Bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord who shall stand in his holy place he that has clean hands, a pure heart, has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor have sworn deceitfully. This is the person that makes up the hedge. Beloved, if we want to bring the gospel, remember that the, the man with the banquet was inviting people, invitation did not work. If we want to bring the compelling dimension of the gospel, this is the protocol. We must be that man, that woman, that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of time, let me just say very quickly that when it comes to Jerusalem and Judea, they are interconnected. There's not so much difference in their manifestations because Judea was also in the same nation. Hallelujah. Judea was also together with Jerusalem. Let me just give a scripture just for context. Acts chapter 2 from verse 14 to 16. You will see that when Peter is talking, he says, men and brethren in all of Judea and Jerusalem, this is the gospel. So we are, when we are dealing with Judea, these are people that will criticize you. They they have been blinded by the spirit of religion they have been blinded by what they call um the first the power of godliness but deny the power thereof a form of godliness but they deny the power thereof so this is how we deal with them by prayer this is why we emphasize prayer in this house prayer is very important because it takes prayer to generate power not just one time prayer the bible says and they continued steadfastly there must be a continuous prayer hallelujah but in addition to prayer the gospel must work in us as well hallelujah the gospel that we preach must work and be an embodiment in our lives that's within the combination of prayer is what compels Jerusalem to come hallelujah now we go to Samaria 
Ah, Samaria is the one of the most interesting ones I've seen. I used to think that Samaria just meant something far away. And then I began to do my research. Remember that you are witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Hallelujah. Now, what, is, what are Samarians? Samarians, by historical geographical rendition, are people that are half Jews, half Gentiles. Once upon a time, a setting of the Jews, they went to mix with other races, even when God had told them not to mix. And these people, as a result, so the, the lineage became polluted. So our Samaria are not people that are far, no. Our Samaria are those that once enjoyed the, the blessings of the covenant and have fallen away. Do you understand that now? Because they were originally Jews by blood, but then their bloodline was corrupted by other Gentiles. So when we are dealing with Samaria, we are dealing with people that were once strong in the faith. They were once good people, but somehow they have fallen away. Both people that have come to church and you've realized after two years they have left church, but it's not just that they left church. They left church and they were on a decline. That's our Samaria. Family members that were good people, they went to church, they were workers in church, then after life happened, they lost hope. This is our Samaria. Now, what is the way to compel Samaria? Because the, like we said earlier, the way you disperse power in, in Jerusalem is not the same way you disperse power in, in Samaria. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 15. Very interesting read. We are reading first of all from verse 3 to 5. This is how we get Samarians. The Bible says, this is the parable he spoke unto them saying, What man, having lost, having a hundred sheep, if you lose one, will you not leave the what? The 99 and go and search after the one hallelujah that was lost i found something very interesting in from verse 5 look at what the bible says and when he found it he laid it on his shoulders rejoicing hallelujah this is the mistake that we make when you find someone that has fallen you know what we do oh i've just brought you to church i've done my job we walk away no the bible says i recognize as a good shepherd that that sheep was tired i must carry you and put you on my shoulders and bring you back because if i allow you to walk you will fall back again when we deal with samaria it is a level of close marking discipleship intimacy he carried the sheep on his shoulders and he went forward but then i now saw in the next parable from verse 8 thereabouts he says what woman having lost one coin look at this she has 10 coins of silver and she lost one she just so she did she lit a candle she swept the house and she sought diligently until she found it look at that how do you do with samarians how do you do with the jurisdiction of samaria number one she lit a candle you must believe god for divine illumination don't just assume that you send one gospel reel you send one message and they will now give their life again no you must ask god god what is your divine direction and instruction for this particular person they lit the candle she lit the candle that is light the entrance of the word brings light and understanding thy word is a lamp unto my feet but is also a light to my path she lit the candle light number two she swept everywhere and then number three she pursued diligently until she found until she found that coin when it comes to samaria i beg of us the compelling power is lovable is love and compassion you will pursue you will not give up you will stay you will keep being there because with jerusalem you prayed and the praying power brought them but in samaria you have to go didn't the bible say regarding jesus that jesus had to go to samaria so you go but you go not with a heart of condemnation. Many of us, we are too quick to judge other people. You see them when maybe studs on the nose or something that in your religion or your culture, he frowns at and then you just disregard people. You see them dressed in a way that you are not comfortable with and then by ourselves like Pharisees, we judge people out of salvation. They look because they see your face. They have seen your rejection. They have seen your disapproval in your body language. And they came once, they did not come again. They don't want you to talk to them because you have belittled them even when you have not spoken anything with our mouths. But when it comes to Samaria, my God, we must come with a heart of passion. This is where we get into that reckless love of God. 
that love that chases down, that does not stop. Look at what the Bible says two times. One left 99 and he sought after the sheep until he found it. Not if he found it, it's until he found it. When it comes to Samaria, there's no, you are taking no for an answer. It may take one year, it may take seven years, it may even take 15 years, but your job is to keep loving, keep going after, keep seeking, keep looking for until you win them over. Hallelujah. Because they were once there, but something happened and they fell off the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must be very careful that we do not allow religion to be the barrier and the stumbling block between us and our neighbor. Samaria is not a distance away, no. Samaria, the people that we see in church every day, is our family members, people that were once in that faith. And then something happened. That ship was once in the fold, but that ship drifted away. That ship drifted away. Oh, I love a scripture that Jesus said. He says that everyone that you have given me, I have lost one, none of them, except the son of perdition. You know what that means? Even if somebody momentarily drifts, you must go back to that word and say, God, you said it so. I don't care whether it takes 10 years. I don't care whether it takes 12 years. Your word says that everyone that has come, you have lost none. Hallelujah. So even though that one ship was missing for maybe three days, and for three days it looked like they are just now 99, but guess what? Like that good shepherd, he went after them and he found them. Hallelujah. You must be that good Samaritan. No. This is how we win over Samaria. Samaria is not an alien place. Samaria is closer than we think. But you come as you are. You don't come with airs. You don't come with pride. You don't come with title. You don't come with position. You come with love and compassion. You come with that reckless love. You talk to them at their level. Don't say, I am a man of God. I am a prophetess. And you are looking down. No. You go and find that sheep. And when you have found that person, please, oh, see what the Bible says. Carry the sheep and put him on your shoulder. Because it takes time. That sheep has been tired by sin, has been spiritually fatigued by distractions, spiritually fatigued because they don't have access to the water of life. So they are tired. They are weak spiritually. So in that season, you carry them. It's hard though. It's not easy. It will cost you. This is why we, we frown against this thing we call convenient Christianity in this generation. The Bible says, it's all actually for a man. Go an extra mile. It will cost you time. It may even cost you resources, but you carry them. You carry them until they get back into the sheepfold. Hallelujah. Until they get back into the sheepfold. This is the heart of the Father. This is the heart of love. That you may win Jerusalem by power and prayer, by intercession and priesthood. But there are many Samarians that even anointed men and women have fallen short of because we lacked one thing, the love of God. The love of God, kindness, love, compassion. You could pray for 10 hours. You could fast for 40 days. But that fasting and prayer could not put love in your heart. And so we lost out on Samaria. Hallelujah. We lost out on Samaria. Just to finish this before we do a recap again. And the Bible now finally says, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Again, I love scripture. Uttermost part of the earth is not that you are traveling from Nigeria to Japan because you want to preach the gospel. Uttermost part of the earth simply means where Jesus, the name of Jesus has never been lifted. Because in Jerusalem, Jesus, there were Jews, there was Judaism, they knew God. In Judea, they knew God. In Samaria, they were half Jews, half Gentiles, so they knew God. Remember the woman that was talking to Jesus at the well? Where should we worship? On the mountain or somewhere else? So they knew God. But the uttermost part of the earth is simply where there has been no mention of God. So can I shock you? Uttermost part of your, the earth is your street, so is your neighborhood. If they have never heard Jesus, that is your uttermost part of the earth. Is in your office. If they have never heard about Jesus and the gospel, that is your uttermost part of the earth. Let's not complicate this gospel and say that for me to do that, I must travel. No, sir. Everywhere that Jesus has not been mentioned, that is the uttermost part of the earth. And that what was the instruction? Go ye into the world. Hallelujah. Is we are not part of the world? Hallelujah. We're always thinking abroad, but even where you are, is part of the going into the world. Go ye in. And preach the gospel and disciple the nations. This was the instruction. 
this was the instruction the time has gone so i'm just going to work with signaling here but again just by way of recap remember jerusalem and judea with these ones they knew god as well some even knew bef they knew god before you were born these ones they will need power i saw one interesting thing in scripture when the bible says a notable miracle was done and we cannot deny it this is why we must pursue power we must strive for power we must not rest we cannot we cannot be satisfied with regular christianity when we are just speaking english no we are the bible says signs and wonders shall follow them that believe i believe what the scripture is saying it's not just a storybook it's a reference point the bible says these things were written for our examples where did we become so cold where do we become so cold that we cannot dem demonstrate or manifest the potency of the gospel? Didn't the Bible tell us, as we read earlier, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, that the gospel of salvation is the power of God unto salvation? Where's your power? Where's your power to be a witness? What does a witness mean? A witness is someone that says, I was there when Jesus came. You may not have been there historically, but you are there by empowerment. Because Jesus said the sick can be healed, I now demonstrate it. Jesus says the dead can be raised, I now demonstrate it. In Jerusalem, you need power. There are people where the Bible says that the God of this world has blinded their hearts. It is a strong covering cast that only power can penetrate. Power found in prayer, in priesthood, in consistency. But after you have dealt with Jerusalem and Judea, when we come back to Samaria, when we come back to Samaria, this is where we drop this thing called religion, no? this thing called position, this thing called title, this thing called, do you know who I am? Do you know what I've achieved? Do you know my exploits? No, sir. No, sir. You must also remember that there was a God that died for us. Didn't the Bible tell me that my righteousness is like filthy rags? Who am I? Who am I? I'm nothing but vapor. It's God that gives this vapor light. So we come to Samaria and we hold their hands. And we walk with them. I'm not judging you, my brother. I'm not judging you, my sister. I know you are going through a lot, but I just want to let you know that I'm here for you if you need anything. Shikena. I'm, just, I'm here for you. If you need anything, you come to them. You are not coming to them and saying that, oh, God is coming for holiness. You are going to hell. They are already condemned already. Do you think they like what they are doing? You know, the amazing about Samaria, you will be shocked how many are ready to receive the word if only you came with love. Jesus went to one city. One woman brought the whole men and they came and they now told Jesus, they now told the woman that now we believe, not because of what you have said, but because we have seen him. It's amazing that the, in Judaism and in, the, in Jerusalem, they reject Jesus and criticized him but he went to Samaria and at once without much prayer they all accepted him Samaria's they are more ready than we think oh it's us that have been the stumbling block we have stood in the way with our pride our arrogance who are you why should I talk to you that's what has happened you look down on somebody today with your body language you now want to come and preach the gospel next week they're not going to listen to you the gospel of Samaria is the gospel of love is the gospel of compassion is the gospel of diligence that i will not rest until i win this person back they will come back to the fold hallelujah hallelujah and then the gospel of the uttermost part of the earth is that we go out is that we go out the uttermost part of the earth where there's been no mention of jesus that's where i'm going pastor i don't have money to travel no sir the uttermost part of the earth is your neighborhood Pastor, I need funds. I need kingdom funds so that we can do this ministry. No, sir. The utmost part of the earth is your neighborhood. Wherever Jesus has not been mentioned. Please remember, we have been called to the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. The same way God has reconciled us, he also expects us to be used to reconcile others. Hallelujah. It is a ministry to redeem people back to God. Let it not be that the chain, the line of operation fell at your own watch. Let it not be that the, the salvation journey ended when you were saved. Don't let God ever regret that God could, could have said, I should have saved this person before you. Because if I saved that person, they would have both won you and won another thousand. Hallelujah. May we not stand in the way. Oh. May we not get in the way. May we not get in the way. This is a call for us to come out of our comfort zone. We enjoy the air conditioner. We enjoy comfort. We enjoy the, the, the good things of life. I hope we are not becoming like that rich young ruler. I hope subconsciously, in a subtle way, we are not becoming like that man 
whom God will say, sell everything and give to me. It was not really about the possessions. Jesus was trying to show him where his heart was. Where your treasure is, is where your heart is. I hope we're not becoming like that person. We have become so engrossed with our comfort that we have forgotten the master's bidding. No, sir. Souls are perishing, you know. Souls are dying. The thing about death is this. As Christians, if somebody dies that we know and they were saved, we'll miss them, but we know that we'll see them again. But once the lost dies, that is it. So don't wait, wait until the second coming or judgment day. For the lost judgment day is when they die. Because it's appointed to man to die once. And after that is judgment. The people that were seen every day, that were taken in a very complacent way, you do not know whether there is second day way from eternal condemnation. No. No. This is a call, like we've been saying in this house for the past few weeks, this is a call to go forth. This is a call to go forth. When you understand this, you will now understand that I'm not just going forth so I can break through. Thank God for breakthrough. But there's something that needs to be broken through in this, in this world. And the gospel of God must advance. Hallelujah. And the castle, the compelling power, the power of love, the power of compassion, the power of desire that can compel even the most sinful to come. Remember Luke 15, 11, a man had two sons and one son had gone very far away. He had lived a riotous life, done anyhow until he became broke and battered. And then when he said to, came to incense, he said, let me go back to my father's house. Even my father's servants are doing better than me here. Let me go back. The Bible says that when the father saw him from afar off, he straight away ran. He ran to embrace his son. Many of us fathers here, you see something like that with your son, you are crossing your legs like a chief. And I say, finally, life has, has bulalad my son. Let him come back. Such culture. But sometimes, the Bible says we make culture, the traditions of men makes the word of God of none effect. This was a parable of the father's lover. That he saw, he saw his son from afar. He left the comfort of his house. He ran. He did not wait in pride for the son to come and beg. He ran. The Bible says he embraced him. Oh, I cannot hang out with sinners. I cannot talk to sinners. They are doing anyhow. Didn't they criticize Jesus? Jesus, why are you sitting with tax collectors and wine? And are you a wine babbler? What was it about Jesus that as holy as he was, that sinners were comfortable with him? What did happen? It was the heart of love. It was the heart of love. He was relatable. He was genuinely kind. And the father ran to his son. He was, the son was smelling like a pig. He was dirty. The father did not care. He kissed him. Come just, just as you are. Come just as you are. And let me also use this opportunity to say now very quickly, if there be anybody here, that you're under the category of Samaria. Maybe you're coming to church out of habit. Maybe you're coming to church because somebody invited you. But you know that you have been heavily disconnected from God. Maybe you are once on fire. I love the song House of Judah sang earlier. Give me oil in my lamp and keep me burning. Maybe you are once in that fold. But now you are in church, but you are out of touch. You can't remember the last time you genuinely communed with God. You can't remember the last time you fellowshiped with God. You can't remember the last time you were on fire for God. I want you to know that this is River House of Glory International Church. We do not judge you. We love you. We do not condemn you. We say, come just as you are. Come and receive the true gospel. The gospel that saves. The gospel that delivered. You don't have to. Don't try and clean yourself. Come as you are. Let God clean you. And when he does... You will be shot with how, with the mighty, manifold way he does with your life. Hallelujah. Please, if this is you by any chance, maybe you do not know Jesus as you should. Maybe you are, in, you are blinded by religion. Maybe you are falling away with secret sin. Secret sin has now even become public sin. Please just lift your hands. Jesus wants to come now. Jesus is saying, come. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice, let him come. Let him open the door and I will come with him. Do I have anybody in this category? You are saying, I want to get it right with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to get it right. I want Jesus. I want a restoration of fellowship. I want a restoration of joy. A restoration of the secret place. Please, can we bow our heads now as you repeat this prayer after me and you say heavenly father church you can pray heavenly father i come to you just as i am please forgive me 
for all of my sins. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for me. Please say that I believe he died for me. I believe he resurrected. I received the life of Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please let's rise to our feet. We are going to pray now. Hallelujah. There could be many of us here that are saved. The first prayer point is for Samaria. You are saved, but you are not even sure of your eternal salvation anymore. You are falling so far away that you, cannot even, you can't even navigate your left from your right. I want you to pray a prayer as we prayed earlier at the beginning. Lord Jesus, I repent. Give me oil in my lamp. I renew my heart today. I come with repentance. Can you pray that prayer? If maybe you have been in Samaria, let me tell you something you are not lost uh, because Jesus, the good shepherd, has found you. Uh, please pray that prayer for some of you are rededicating your heart to God even today. Lord, I repent. Forgive me for all of my sins. Uh, restore my life. Restore my intimacy with you. Restore my reverential fear of God. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now, secondly now, we are all have people that are in Jerusalem. Can we generate power? Can we generate power? So maybe our brother, our sons, daughters, cousins, nephews, the Bible says that while they prayed, their, their noise was noised abroad and the people came and they heard it in their language. Maybe we have been preaching the gospel, just not in the language that is enough to bring them in. Can you hold the hand of somebody? And now, can I just have that melody of what the house of Judah sang earlier? And can we begin to generate power? The power that compels, uh, that we will testify that even in this month of April, uh, somebody that was lost has been found. Uh, somebody that was in Jerusalem uh, has come to the salvation grace uh, of the gospel. Can you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? Lekate panda kapada kaya, rato pande kapaya. Jerusalem comes by power. Judea comes by power. Anakazo, we compel them to come. Rato pande kapaya, rato pende kapaya, rato pende kapaya, rato pande kapaya, rato pande kateria kapaya, rato pande kateria. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are still praying, but we can pray better. Please, I need the symbols. Thank you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 3, it says, If our gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost, whom Satan has blinded their hearts, that they are not able to come to the glorious light of the gospel. In the realm of the spirit, there's something called a satanic veil that you'll be speaking gospel by sounding like mere English because there's a veil that is blocking light. You must tear that veil for the Bible says that the face of the coffin caster shall be torn asunder, shall be removed. I want you to pray. Every veil in the heart of that person, let that veil tear now. In the name of Jesus, let the veil tear. Let the Satan tear. Veil tear. You can clap your hands. You can pray like a prayer. Let the veil tear. The veil of religion, the veil of sin, the veil of pride, let it tear by the power in the name of Jesus. Rabba Bande Kateria Kaya, Rabba Bande Kaya, Rabba Bande Kateria Kaya, Rabba Bande 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 Kaya. Let the heart be cut asunder. Let the chains break. Let the bells tear. Let the coffin cut be removed. Pray like a prayer. Come on, Rocheka. Rabba, be, 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 be,
prayer point. It says, go ye into the world. Many of us are going, but we are going without oil. No. We are going without oil. You can deceive men because we wear nice suits, nice dresses and makeup. But you alone know that deep down, that oil has either been polluted, tampered with, or it has run out completely. The dangerous thing with Christianity is that we have what we call Christianities. That a man can lack oil, but can still speak like a Christian, can still pray like a Christian, can still even teach like a Christian. I want us to pray finally for ourselves. Because we are the ones that must go out to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the utmost parts. But we have to go with oil. Final prayer points. Restore my oil, O oh God. Restore my oil. Restore my secret place. Can you turn that to prayer? Restore my oil, O God. Restore. Restore my oil, O God. Don't leave me the same way I came. I have come to the house of the Lord that I may have an encounter, that I may be refreshed and renewed. Rabba mes kateria da barataya, rada da 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 barata bakataya, rabba mes katabakaya. Restore my oil, O God. Ebe de makanda sabada na mande prono sabakai. Rebe mana kai bara da banya de. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's a lamb on to my feet. It is a light on to my path. Lord, your word is a lamb on to my feet. And a light is a light on to Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet, and it's a light unto my path. Oh, Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet, oh, and it's a light. 
Jesus, thank you, house of Judah. Hallelujah. The Lord had given utterance today, and we have been blessed. Hallelujah. Can we stretch our hands and bless the servant of God, the vessel? We have been impacted greatly this morning. Can you just begin to say, Father God, replenish Pastor Suki. We pray that the doors, the open doors of utterance, we continually manifest in your ministry in the name of Jesus. We pray for fresh fire upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the utterance, for the impartation, for the blessing. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. You can now be seated in Jesus' name. It's time to give our offering. We're about to give a, an acauso offering. Hallelujah. An acauso offering. Acts 20.35 says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. So it is not about how you feel. It's about positioning yourself to be blessed. Are we together? That's why I call it an acauso offering. Be compelled to step into the blessing zone. Don't give because you feel like giving. But give, be compelled to step into the blessing. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. It's also time to pay our tithe. If you know that the Lord is your source, tithe is a way to honor your Father in heaven for making it possible for you to prosper. So the ushers are there to give you the tithe envelope, and the details are on the screen. So if you're done packaging your offering and your tithe, can you raise it up so that we speak a blessing upon it so that you really step into that zone of blessing. The Lord will so bless you. And as we receive the word this, uh, today, you'll be able to go into your Jerusalem, your Judea, your Samaria, and to the utmost end of the earth. God is going to so bless you that your money will speak where you cannot step. Hallelujah. So if you're giving that uh, offering, can you raise it up so that we speak a blessing upon it? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to give back to you. What an honor to give, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father God, and we pray that you bless our tithes and our offerings. We pray for those who could not give, Abba Father, that you will bless them. For you're the one that gives seeds to the sower. We bless them so that they step into the zone of being a blessing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. May our offerings be accepted to you in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. So please pass the offering, watch it as it goes to the ushers, and then look up to the screen for media presentation. Thank you.
Good morning and welcome to another Sunday in Good News April. I am Yinka Olayemi and this is Rogic News Weekly. Here are the headlines. Going forth for a break forth, a time to ignite. This is Rogic News Weekly. It is two weeks into the month of April already and God has been good. I am sure many can testify to the reports of good news of all shades that they have experienced already. God's word does not fall to the ground because he is excellent in all his ways. And guess what? Our core value for the week is the spirit of excellence. A God of excellence has poured into his people the spirit of excellence. And so all that we do must be wrapped in excellence. You must go into your week, therefore, with the knowledge of this in view, that you are rare, excellent, and represent the excellence in Christ. And let this inform your words, your actions, and your responses. Don't go away. Rajak News will be right back after this. It is not what takes you up that keeps you up. Listen, you can go up even if you are a Muslim, you're Hindu, you're Jew, you're whatever you are, you're Judaism, or you're Christian. It, what it takes to go up, hard work, focus, diligence, and some of those things they teach you in business schools or get rich quick schemes. Listen, it takes more than all that to stay up. You may be able to go up, you may succeed to go up, you may have come out of obscurity, now they know you, now you're here, you're there, you're known, you're... but guess what, it takes more than what brought you up to stay up, it takes godly character, it takes brokenness, it is easier to go up than to stay up. This week in Rogic. Come expectant to our Word and Worship interactive service this Wednesday, 17th of April. You don't want to miss out on the download the Lord will be delivering to us in this meeting. The time is 5.30 p.m. right here at the Golden Bird Event Center. And this Friday, 19th of April, is another opportunity to gather and fellowship with your ICC family, Ignite City Center, or ICC is our home cell fellowship, where we bond in smaller groups and discuss God's word together in more detail. The time is 6 p.m. There's someone at the information desk at the foyer to help you identify a center close to your home or office. You'll be glad you did. And this Saturday, 20th April, will be our quarterly retreat for workers and leaders. Leaders at all levels are expected to be in attendance. The meeting begins 8 a.m. here at the Golden Bird Event Center. Now, if you're in Makodi, Portakot, or Oweri, Nigeria, and of course, Toronto, Canada, no need to feel detached from a church family. Rajik's got you. In Makodi, services and prayer hold on Sundays at Rajik Makodi, Fort Jonah Jang Crescent, opposite the Voice newspaper near Police B Division Junction, Makodi. It's 8 a.m. on Sundays and 4.45 p.m. on Wednesdays. To get more information, speak with someone on 080-722-9372. In Oweri, our services hold on Wednesdays by 5 p.m. and Sundays by 8 a.m. inside East College, Area U, New Oweri by Imo State High Court. And for inquiries, call 0806-838-7977. And if you happen to be in Port Harcourt, join our life's transforming services, which hold at kilometer six, East West Road by iPress Publishing and Printing at Choba, Port Harcourt, River State on Wednesdays by 45 p.m. and Sundays at 8 a.m. And for inquiries, call 0703-742-5995. Now, if you've recently jappered to Toronto, Canada, or are visiting over there, you are welcome to a Rogic Sunday service holding at 19 Waterman Avenue, Suite 207, East York. Waterman Place, back entrance, R. The time is 10 a.m. EST 
And for more inquiries, kindly call any of these numbers. Plus 1437 230 2058 or plus 1437 227 6703. That's all we can take today. See you on Wednesday at our Word and Worship Interactive Service. My name is Yinka Olayemi. Have an excellent week filled with good news. Can you celebrate Roger News once again? <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyone blessed this Sunday morning? Yeah. Were you blessed at the morning glory? And the main service, let me celebrate Pastor Suki for such an amazing, timely word. Bless you, man of God. The Lord refresh you and strengthen you in Jesus' name. He will take you from grace to grace and glory to glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, before we begin to close today's service, I want to quickly... Um, Beckon on the family of Barrister Musa Selman. Um, Tia Selman turned 50, I think last Wednesday, April 10th. Um, let the family come for family Thanksgiving. Please celebrate, celebrate. We believe in celebrating in Roger. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, Mungode Makayo, Ubangi Kaikade Kai Sayabo. Yes, Mungode Makayo, Ubangi Kaikade Kai Sayabo. Yes, Ubangi Kaikade Kai Sayabo. Yes, Mungode Makayo. Tia, how do you feel 50? Jubilee looks good on you. You look 16. <laughs> They say big things come in small packages. <laughs> Soon be a grandma shortly. Uh. <laughs> Happy Jubilee. The Lord bless you and honor you. Go ahead. Um. Morning, church. Do I have to say anything? Daddy has said it all. First born to Karatu and Nanwar 50 years ago. Big sister to four others. To God's glory, mother to four Pastor Goodhart's baby, Marvin, will be a doctor in a few months. Who am I? This handsome young man. <laughs> he has a way of just turning my life around. Now go there. Now go there. Now go there. I'm so blessed. A father. Now go there, Baba. When you did some Now go there. My children, jewels in my life. I give God glory. The best team. The best team. Evangelism. Nagodi. Thank you, Sam Kualberka. Nagodi. Thank you, Rajik. My family for life. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please stretch your hand in the direction of Tian, the entire family, and speak a word of blessing. Let's decree and declare that Jubilee indeed will be her reality and by extension the entire family. Lift your voice for woman and proclaim blessings. Akobarono faska tekete legodosas faniate. Father, let these truly be her golden years. Her golden years. Her more beautiful years. Her more decorated years. Her more anointed years. Her more fruitful and restful years even in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your blessings. Continue to make rich and add no sorrow whatsoever. We undergird this household with a wall of fire. We declare and declare fresh oil upon your lives for greater exploits for the kingdom and the king. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God's hand be on an increase upon you in the name of the Lord. 
and upon your entire household. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's rejoice and celebrate and dance back. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, somebody. Surely will rise to share the goodness. Want to encourage you to continue to go to the highways and the byways. Uh, witness and invite them to be discipled in your own home church. Let's compel men and women to come to the house of the Lord. At the end of service, we have a very brief but important workers meeting. Please workers, endeavor to move to the first few seats. And within a few minutes, we'll wrap that up. But most importantly, Saturday 20 is a very, very important day um, for us as the entire workforce leaders and pastors. Please endeavor uh, to be a part of that. It's our quarterly retreat, and all are expected to be in attendance. I want to honor and celebrate um, dear friend, Pastor Theo Ubani. Please help me celebrate him. A man of many parts. Hallelujah. Very active in the marketplace, but yet truly grace and anointed of the Lord. Oh, Roger, we have to learn how to honor and celebrate. Don't get tired. When you give honor, honor comes back to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, a quick reminder. Uh, we have three hourly prayer watches um, from midnight for 30 minutes, uh, 3 a.m. for 30 minutes, and 6 a.m. for 30 minutes, 9 a.m. 30 minutes, and then 12 noon, 30 minutes, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., and a general assembly for one hour, 11 to 12. I believe these are ways that God has made it easier for us to keep our personal altar, prayer altar to be on fire. If you're not a part of any of those uh, watches at the end of service, We'll have, uh, I think, eight of them, eight of them, yes, will stand here with the times I mentioned from 12 midnight, 3, 6, 9, 12, round the clock, in that order, in sequence. Whatever watch suits you, your lifestyle, your time, please endeavor to at least become a member of one of the watches. You can pray in all or some, but identify one to be your watch, like a cell, family church, let it be your own. You know why? It's important for us to keep that altar burning around the clock for your good more than anything else. So please, at the end of service, don't rush out. You find men, women standing here with a piece of paper, with a particular watch they lead or represent. Uh, you please endeavor to sign up and to be a part of that watch that you commit to be consistent to, even as you will join other watches as time affords you. And sometimes I join quite a few watches in the day. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, if today is your first Sunday morning in Rogic, uh, we have a VIP reception for you. You can only enjoy this one time only. The one time you came for the first time. So it's your first Sunday. Pick your Bibles, your bag, all you came with, all you gave your life to Christ. You pray that prayer sincerely and you turn your heart to Jesus. Please make your way to the altar. Ushers direct them. Come with your bags, your Bible, all you came with. As you come to the altar, turn to my left, to your right. Let's celebrate. Celebrate them the Roger way. Come on, make them feel warmly welcome. We prayed about them. We evangelized. We invited. Now they're here. To my left, to your right. Let's celebrate. They're coming from the back, the middle. Keep on clapping. Lord, we give you praise and glory for adding to us day by day. Day by day. Don't get tired of clapping. When one soul is saved in heaven, the angels throw a party. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Give God praise. Give God glory. Add it to us day by day. Day by day. 
thank you. Welcome home. We love you. We celebrate you. Welcome home. We love you. We celebrate you. We love you. We celebrate you. Love you and celebrate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next Wednesday and Sunday, endeavor to add to the job heaven as you and a castle. Somebody to be in church on Wednesday and on Sunday. Well, will you do that to the highways and byways and, and, and compel men to come to the house of the Lord? Shall we now rise on our feet and just spend a minute or two to give our God praise and glory? That we're in a nation where we can still pray, we can still preach and still lift our hands. We must be thankful to God. Let's lift our voice and thank the Lord for his help over this nation thus far. In spite of our many ills and difficulties and challenges, he has shown us mercy as a people. Can you bless the Lord for being a part of a wonderful church family? Bible declares how good and pleasant it is for them to dwell together in the place called unity. This is the place. Oh yes. Oh for the fresh all will continue to enjoy. Eat and will gather. Whether in twos, in tens, in hundreds, in thousands. Shall we bless him? Oh for the refreshing, for the strengthening. For today thank him. Can you now bless your week? That this week is my week of weeks. I go forth. Breaking forth and breaking out. I go forth. All the lines are fallen unto me, unto you. In pleasant place in this week. We secure this week and all activities in church. Online, on site, with an open heavens by the blood. Father, thank you. Let our altars burn with fire through this week. The watches, the midweek service, the Sunday morning service, and every other gathering, whether online, on site. GPPA, 5 a.m. on fire. 12 noon on fire. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Give him praise for 30 more seconds. Go ahead and thank him. Will you thank him? Will you thank him? Will you thank him? All oh, the blessing of the Lord upon your life makes rich. No sorrow whatsoever. This week, go forth without any form of sorrow. Break forth, break out on all sides, all levels. Even in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for a week of weeks of your blessing, of safety, of security, and provision. In Jesus' name, we've given thanks. Somebody shout a big amen. Come on, shout like a thunder, a big amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's clear our throats and express our faith in what will come to love our humble declaration of faith. And the count of three, loud and clear. One, two, three, go. I am born again by the incorruptible seed of God's word. Though I am in the world, I am not of the world system. I have victory by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I am called and empowered by God to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Because I am from above, I exercise dominion, rulership and authority over every earthly affair. My entire life choices and decisions are guided by the integrity of God's word. I am what God's word says I am and I can do what God's word says I can do. I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live for self and self-interest, but for Christ. Passionate worship is an expression of gratitude for my inheritance in Christ. I live in the consciousness of eternity. Therefore, I walk daily in the reverential fear of God. I'm a love child of a love God. I'm accepted in the beloved. The love of God is shed abroad in my heart. Therefore, I express God's love freely to others. I'm a person of excellence, integrity, and character. Live to bring glory to God by the workings of the spirit of excellence in my personal life. My life and heart are set ablaze with passion and zeal for Christ. I'm a soul winner and I delight in showing the love of Christ in my world. I make fervent prayers and study of the word top priority in my life. God's grace is abundantly sufficient for me to finish the journey of life well. As I see God's kingdom daily, all my needs and provisions for life, they are met supernaturally. I am blessed by God to be a blessing to my generation. Amen and amen. In 2024, 
I break all records and cross all barriers. In 2024, the limits are now broken and every ceiling removed. Break forth, 2024, is indeed my reality and your reality, even in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember to walk to the altar and sign up for one of the watches that you consider your own watch to keep and to be consistent over. As you go forth, the heavens open over this house, remains open over you as an individual and as a family. This week will be the week of weeks. Week of breaking forth at all sides, every level, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No evil occurrence, no accident, nothing dies in your hand or dies around you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be back on Wednesday corporately and on Sunday. Let's share the grace together as a family. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Now look into the eyes of anybody to declare, surely God's goodness and his mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. You will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful Sunday. Blessings. Wonderful week.